Good morning, everybody. Welcome to week eight of the semester. It is flying by. I hope that you're all able to kind of just take some time and regroup. Um, make sure that you are still able to carve out enough time to read the course content, to watch the videos, and to practice, most importantly. So this week is going to be focused heavily on data visualization. So irrespective of whether you're doing lean or you're part of a continuous improvement group, you're going to be using and talking about data. You're gonna be looking at daily dashboards. Your numbers might be financials, they might be quality metrics, they might be outcomes focused. Irrespective, one of the biggest things I think we struggle with as leaders is really distilling the information that's most important, right? We have so much information and oftentimes we wanna include as much as possible, but how can we focus on those key metrics? So whether they're KPIs, key performance indicators, smart goals that you have, strategic goals of the organization, focusing on those things that are very important to the strategic growth of the organization and really understanding not just, you know, either throwing up raw data or just, or just showing up um, a simple line graph. Oftentimes what I'll see some leaders do is, and you may see, have seen this if you do work in an acute care facility and look at patient satisfaction scores, so you might get these scores, which of course are lagging indicators because these are surveys that were sent months ago that we're now just receiving. But we'll be looking at how we performed last month on every unit, what the patient satisfaction scores were and what we did this, this month. And then maybe what we did over the course of the entire year as a whole, that does not really present a very good picture or give us a real understanding. And what happens in these meetings is when you are comparing two data points, this month versus last month, and let's say your patient satisfaction scores are, they're a little bit lower than they were last month, all of a sudden the focus and the attention turns to that person or that unit. Everybody gets up in arms and is really concerned about what they're doing and they're tr trying so hard, but they're just not seeing the movement. That's not helpful. That's creating a culture that is just kind of fear-based and isn't really grounded in what's happening. So what we see in any process, whether it's patient satisfaction scores or financials or other sort of operational metrics, is that there is variability, right? So the, the data is going to kind of go up and down like this. What we want to look for are those trends, right? So really using um, a run chart where we can, we can identify what's happening over time. We can see if there are major increases or, de or decreases in the data. And even if we can go a step further, and I'm not gonna ask you to do this for this class, but if we can look at statistical process control charts, where we actually use the variance in the data to understand when we're starting to see something significant. Um, if you've taken operations with me, you've practiced that there. Um, it is one of the seven quality tools that I want you to, to read through this week. More so than that, as you're starting to get grounded in why data is important and how we can use it to tell our story, is I want you to practice with Tableau. Tableau is a data visualization software program that is becoming increasingly utilized by, by leaders in basically every industry. Um, a lot of job descriptions now will say that they, they're looking for somebody with some comfort with Tableau, either in just making presentations or some visuals in Tableau, or even uh, there are full dashboards that are used that are based in Tableau. So you have access to this software through Oswego. So I'm gonna be asking you this week, and this is what you might wanna do if you wanna get started on something early this week, is jump down to the section on data visualization in the, mo in, uh, the module and focus on, I've outlined some steps and some tutorials on how to get started with Tableau. I've got the details in there for how you can go about and access Tableau through Citrix. Um, and then I'll also point you to some specific content, again, in LinkedIn Learning, uh, where you can go in and watch just a couple videos to get you started. And your discussion this week is going to be using the John Hopkins data, uh, looking at New York State and looking at COVID cases. A colleague of mine, a former colleague of mine at Michigan Medicine has been tracking this and we kind of just emailed back and forth and he said, hey, do you want this raw data for, for New York State? I've been keeping it all the way up and through uh, the end of September. So there are some really interesting things that you can parse out of that data. Your job for this week is to try to tell a story about what's happening with COVID in New York State using that data set. So not only trends, but geographic regions and what we're seeing as a whole. So really try to tap into those quality tools um, and use as much of Tableau as you can. Again, this is just practice and exposure for you. If you've taken managerial epidemiology with me, uh, we use Tableau in there as well. If you haven't, you can expect to do that 
in one of the upcoming semesters. So I just want to get you comfortable with um, not necessarily just going to Excel um, or PowerPoint for basic graphs, right? We have, I, I think, overused those basic graphs and we're really kind of numb to the story that they tell. So how can you put together, based on this raw data, three visuals that are going to tell a story? That is your charge for this week. And as always, if you have questions as you get started, please don't hesitate to reach out.